Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So a viewer sent in a question on the last video, um, or a request, uh, just asked for a quick video on uh, how parameters are passed, or which registers are used to pass the parameters. Uh, so for, uh, for a Belgian geek, from an Australian geek, this one's for you mate, um, how parameters are passed. Um, I've also, I'm, I'm filming from the beach again, I think I've picked the worst possible place to film. I'm just in the shadow of a rock. And uh, hopefully the wind is not too loud through the microphone, I don't know. So the exact registers that are used for parameters is dependent on the uh, compiler that you're using and the operating system that you're uh, programming for. Now what we've been using in Visual Studio is uh, the, the Windows C calling convention. And it looks something like this. So the first, second, third and fourth parameters are passed via registers. And it's interesting in the Windows one because the first parameter is passed in RCX if it's an integer or a pointer. It's passed in XMMO if it's a floating point value. So that's floats or doubles. Uh, the second parameter is passed in RDX or XMM1 if it's floats. Um, again, RDX if it's a pointer. Um, then we got R8 is the third parameter and R9 is the fourth parameter. So. The thing about the Windows way of doing things though, which is it's kind of annoying really, and I think Linux does this better. If you use XMMO, if you pass a floating point parameter first, then uh, the next parameter will go into RDX. Yeah, so if, you, if your first parameter is a float, then you won't be using RCX to pass an integer. I've got this uh, little function just here called call me maybe. Um, what we might do is uh, for, for just a little demonstration, let's just pass an integer. So if call me maybe takes a single int, um, we'll just say that it's called int c, like that. And let's pass the value 24. Uh, if we come over here to assum, because this is the first uh, parameter, and because it's an integer, it will be passed in rcx. Uh, so actually we don't need to do anything, we can just put, put a breakpoint there on ret, because I set up some watches before. Let's see where this goes. Um, okay, so 24 we're looking for, let's just get our watch window up. Yeah, there we go. So you see there, in RCX, it's 24. Now that's just the low 32 bits of RCX, so ECX, really. Yeah, but because it's an integer, it goes straight into ECX. Uh, so if there's two parameters, then the first is passed in ECX, and the second, if we just call it Y, will be passed in... Uh, let's go 26. The second will be passed in EDX. Let's give that a run and see what happens. Get our watch window up. Yeah, there we go. So 24, the first parameter, is passed in ECX or RCX, and the second parameter is passed in RDX or EDX. Okay, so the third and fourth integer parameters would be passed in R8 and R9, respectively. But um, what we might do is go on to demonstrate uh, floating points. So let's pass a float. Let's call it uh, float G. And for our float demonstration, where's my mouse cursor? Oh, I got it. It's up in the top. Sorry about that. It's hard to see. Take your glasses off. That's worse. Um, okay, so well, let's pass 56.2. That's one of my favourite numbers. And I think yours at home too. 56.2. Uh, yeah, the first parameter is a float. So whenever the first parameter is a float, it'll be passed in XMMO. Or XMM0, I should say, not XMMO. Um, okay, so if we just uh, expand this little XMM0 and we come down to the floats, there we go, 56.2008. A little bit of a rounding error there. Yeah, but the first parameter is passed in the lowest float of uh, XMM0, if it's a float. So the second floating point parameter, maybe it's a double this time, let's go double and we'll call it Y. And I reckon... I've always liked the number 100.4, and we'll give that a save. Okay, so this is a double now, but uh, if we refer to the table from the beginning, we see that the first float is passed in XMMO, the second float in XMM1. So let's give it a bit of a run and see what happens. Let's get our watch window going. All right, XMM0 has the float from before, 56.2. And XMM1 has the second parameter. Where are we? Here it is. 100.4001. Uh, again, a little bit of rounding error. 
Okay, so that's how you pass floats and integers. They just get passed in um, RCX, RDX, R8, or R9 if they're integers, and XMM0, 1, 2, and 3 if they're floats. Okay, so, so what happens if you mix this stuff up a little bit? So this is really where it gets, I think, annoying for um, Windows programmers, but let's go unsigned, long, long. Actually, let's do a, let's do a small uh, integer. Let's go like um, short int, short int i. This int's not very tall. And then we'll go float um, t. We'll pass 67 for the short int, and we'll pass um, that, 0.9. Okay, so what's going to happen here, the first uh, parameter is an integer, so it's going to be passed in RCX. The second parameter is a float, so that's going to be passed in XMM1. Uh, you notice that even though the second parameter is the first float, it's still passed in XMM1. Linux doesn't do it like this. Um, Linux would use XMMO. Um, okay, so but, but we can see there that the first parameter was an int. Oh, we can't, sorry. Uh, it was a short int, so it was, it'll only be the low um, 16 bits of RCX, so it's a little bit hard to read, but... Uh, there it is there, 0043 in hexadecimal. And the second parameter will be passed in XMMO, and there it is right there, 576... That's not good reading. Okay, so the second parameter will be passed in either RDX or XMM1. Whichever you're using, if it's an int, it's in RDX. If it's a float, it's in uh, XMM1. And it's the same with the third parameter. So if the third parameter is an int, it's going to be passed in R8. And if it's a float or a double, it's going to be passed in XMM2. And finally, the last parameter, or the uh, fourth parameter, will be passed in X. MM3 if it's a float or a double and it'll be passed in R9 if it's a pointer of some sort uh, So what we might do is just have a go at passing a pointer um, So let's make a class We'll call it Carly After um, Carly Ray Jepson Stupid let's just get on with it. I might actually give this a, a, a single uh, value. We'll just say int j and we might set that to an arbitrary value. We'll just say j equals 200. Now we'll make it five. Okay, so, so if you just pass, um, if we say here that um, call me maybe takes an object of type Kali, and we'll just call it C, uh, you'll notice that the compiler will actually make a copy of, of Kali in the registers before it passes it. So. So what we should see in RCX is J, this 5 just here. Uh, let's have a bit of a look. Yes, there it is, 5 in RCX. Yeah, so often when you're dealing with objects, you'll really want to pass them around by, by pointers um, or pass them by reference because you don't want to be copying... Um, uh, you don't want to be copying things so often. So a reference or a pointer, uh, once again, will be passed in RCX. Uh, how would we test this? Maybe if I go like... Um, Uh, I'll just call this PTR, and we'll say that it equals ampersand G. Um, okay, so if I put a breakpoint right here, and we've got a breakpoint over here, what we should be able to see is that this pointer, or this, this pass by reference, um, G just here, uh, will actually be the pointer uh, in RCX, sorry, it'll be passed in RCX. Um, okay, so at our first breakpoint, um, sorry, things are a little bit messy at the moment. Uh, at our first breakpoint, okay, so we can see there that the pointer to the G object is something like 50FFC4 or something like that. And if we jump over to assembly uh, and we check RCX in hexadecimal, uh, there you see it there, 50FFC64. I should just be able to change this to hex actually. Yeah, there it is there. So if you're passing pointers, they take up um, integer spots. So they're going to use RCX, RDX, R8, or R9. Okay, so that's about all that I wanted to say on passing uh, values around like this. Uh, I should say that array pointers, or character pointers, integer pointers, um, object pointers, they're all the same. Uh, and the same with references too. References are just pointers. They'll all be passed in the same spots as the integers. 
Uh, so the other thing that I want to mention is that after you've exhausted your first four parameters, um, in the Windows calling convention, uh, it'll actually use the stack for all subsequent parameters. So in order to explain how the stack works and passing parameters be beyond these first four, uh, we really need to make a, a, a dedicated video. Um, uh, this is just a bit of a video to explain um, where the first four parameters are passed. Once we've got our parameters, how do we return values? Um, so once again, in the x64 or 64-bit C calling convention, in Microsoft, it's nice and easy. Um, you return any integer value in RAX. So if you're returning a byte, for example, then you would return it in AL. If you're returning a short integer or 16 bits, you'd return it in AX. Uh, you use EAX to return a 32-bit integer and you'd use RAX to return a 64-bit integer. Um, if your integer has, uh, if your integer is not an integer, uh, if it's a pointer, then once again you use RAX. So let's have a bit of a go, shall we? Um, let's say that we want to. Mm -hmm. Let's say that we want Carly, uh, call me maybe, sorry, to return a Carly star or a, a pointer to um, a Carly object. Then we can say. Um, Okay, so we might say Carly star, and it really makes no difference at all what we call it. Um, so our objective just here is to show that when you want to return a pointer, um, you return it in RAX. So uh, what will we do here? Mov RAX RCX. Okay, so because the um, reference to Carly just here, actually we might make it a little bit more explicit. We might say that Carly is a pointer. Okay, so now we've got call me maybe and it takes a pointer to a Kali object and it returns a pointer to a Kali object. So just to show that when you want to return a pointer, you use RAX. Let's give this a bit of a run. I should have put a breakpoint down here on return. Let's have another go. We'll put a breakpoint down here on return. And we'll continue. Um, okay, so our code just there, all, all that it did was copied the pointer from RCX that it was given as the first parameter, just copied it over to RAX and uh, returned it. So what we really want to do is just check that the address of G, we don't know the address of G, so that was clever, uh, is the same as the address of whatever that word there is. Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do this very clearly and we can't see the address of G, but it will be. It'll be the same address. Yeah, so if you want to return a, return a pointer, just put it in RAX. Okay, so let's have a go at returning um, a, a, a char, maybe. Let's have a go at returning a byte. Um, mov AL7. There we go. Okay, so if you want to return a byte, it's easy enough. You just pop it in AL. Whatever is in AL, C++, we'll read that as the return of a byte. Um, whatever is in... Uh, AX, that will be read as the return of a short integer or an unsigned short. Yeah, it's pretty easy really. And and the other thing is, if you want to return a floating point value, then XMMO or XMM0 is the place to do it. So how would we demonstrate this? Uh, maybe we get ourselves a bit of a float, eh? Let's have a go. Um, we'll just make, um, let's say like my float. Uh, it's a real four, and we'll say 45.6. Why not? There we go. Uh, what's the, uh, is it SS? Real four pointer, and my float. Yeah, so anything that's in XMMO after our call will be read as the return value. Let's have a bit of a go at this then. Uh, let's say that uh, float my float equals that. We'll give it a save and we'll give it a run. So this should return uh, 45.6 yeah, as a floating point value. And if we just give it a bit of a watch, one. Why is it returned one? Because that's a char. <laughs> what are you? Okay, let's try that again. We won't put char as a return. That's a good idea. 
Uh, there we go, 45.599999. So that's, you know, that's that's this number just here. Okay, and it's the same with doubles too. If you want to return a double, then um, obviously this is going to be real eight instead of uh, real four, since doubles are eight bytes wide. Yeah, but same deal. It's just returned in that XMM0, the lowest bytes. Errors. You've got too many errors, mate. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm out. Um, oh, come on. you still got errors. What are my errors? Let's see. Invalid instruction operands. Oh, yeah. Move scalar double mov SD. So these are um, uh, SSE and SSE2 instructions. Don't worry about the mov SD and the mov SS. We can go through that another time. Uh, but the point here is that if you want to return a float or a double, then you put it in the lowest um, float or double, the lowest single or double of uh, XMMO. Yeah, so that's just about all that I wanted to say on passing values to and from functions. There's a lot more to it when you want to pass more than just the first four, but that's the basics to it there. So hopefully that helps you out, Mr. Belgian Geek, and thank you very much for leaving a comment and watching. And I also want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and uh, it really means a lot to me that, um, you know, people are out there supporting what I'm doing here. So I'm going to be uploading um, some extra little some extra little videos for those uh, kind people as well on, uh, on Patreon, just as a bit of a thank you. Um, anyway, that's all that I wanted to say today, and uh, thank you very much for watching. You have a good day. Adios. Jesus, can't type bite, brother. Let's go, um, char. I don't know what language I thought I was coding then. Bite. No such thing, mate.